That's right. Season four coming to you on April 12th. Okay. So um, now that you guys are this far into the series, uh, I guess, what can we expect? Because <laughs> the twists and turns have been really good, you know? Um, this season, um, I think, was probably the hardest to break writing-wise, but the most exciting. Uh, sort of, And I think that's sort of true anytime you're in a writer's room or anytime you're working on anything written, the giving birth process, you know, is, is legit. You know, you have to really wrestle with it. And I think... Um, that process, you know, really proved uh, to be uh, in an outstanding sort of <laughs> way to get a season that we're really proud of. I think that audiences, I mean, treat your edges now so that way <laughs> you have one or two left because there are some moments that, you know, like I've been from the sh with the show from the beginning and I still was just like, oh, wow. <laughs> Okay, all right. Like, you know, so there's going to be twists and turns. And um, yeah, I think audiences are going to be really excited. Now, when you first started with this project, well, I guess we should start there. How did you become a part of the Insecure Family? The Insecure Family, well, um, it started with FaceTiming with no pants on, um, which is just how to start. all Hollywood <laughs> stories begin. <laughs> um, I took a meeting uh, in New York with Amy Gravitt, who's an exec over at HBO, and it was just a general meeting, and uh, we were connecting on a lot of things we have in common. She's an Air Force brat, or she was in the Air Force, I'm an Air Force brat, and uh, had a great meeting, and at the end, she's just like, you know, do you, you know, we're, we're working on this pilot with this really amazing person, do you know Issa Rae? And I was like, do I know her? I'm like, I'm the, the awkward black girl, <laughs> like, tell me about it. And she's like, well, yeah, you know, I think that you guys should, you know, you should talk to her about you know, potentially writing on the show, let's set up a call. And it was a FaceTime while I was living in the studio in Brooklyn. And I like pushed all my furniture to one corner. So it looked more sort of like popular, like populated. And uh, I was very much a walking mullet. I had on like a business shirt. And because I was like, you know, doing the comedy thing, I didn't have like a proper outfit. So I was like, I'm gonna wear my, my, uh, my pajama pants on, <laughs> on the bus. So it was a party on the bottom and business on top. That's what we call it in this industry. That's right. <laughs> I was a walking mullet. And then, uh, I FaceTime with her and we just really clicked. I think like, you know, game recognized game and awkward recognized awkward. Like we were just giggling over just like how weird we were and just really connected on sort of just like themes of, you know, being, uh, the character's theme of being, you know, a single black girl, just sort of like trying to figure it out. And I got the job as a writer, and it wasn't until um, three months or so, I would say, or no, like into the writer's room, maybe it was less than that, like two months, because we had written, I want to say maybe the first four episodes, um, and Issa and Prentice, our showrunner, called me into the office and was just like, you know, do you want to play Kelly? And so that's sort of how that happened. So I wasn't even an actor on the show, I was writing on the show at the beginning, um, and then the rest is history. Like from there, they, they, they've been such amazing sort of champions of me as a creator and being on the show. But that's sort of the, the, the journey to, to what we, where we are through four seasons later. Yeah, so yeah. When, you, when they came to you and, and wanted you to play this particular uh, character, had you at any point in the writing process before they came to you thought, man, I would really love to be on this show and not just be writing for this show? I, I had always wanted that, but I would have never spoken to it. Like I didn't want to enter into any project with an ulterior motive. And to me, that's maybe antithetical to Hollywood because I think everyone seems to have a, a motive, but it's just not who I am. So I wanted to just genuinely be in my first writer's room. Like prior to that, I was on SNL, which is a writer's room, but it's not scripted, you know, series. It's, you know, sketch, which is a different muscle than sort of writing a half hour comedy for HBO, which is a style unto itself. And so um, for me, I just wanted to learn as much as I could. I wanted to just really sort of uh, translate my writing into sort of what they needed. Um, and I was doing that successfully at the time. And so I think... I never thought it would be possible. And in the writer's room, a part of our process, we would take the scripts when they were written and we would read them internally as writers. So the 11 of us, Issa and Princess would just assign random characters just so we can hear the words out loud. And they kept assigning me Kelly. And then for me, I was just like, and I have a degree in theater and they knew that I had, you know, I was a performer. So it wasn't lost on them that I could do multiple things, but I never truly never thought that it would lead to what you know to Kelly and I the proof of the pudding is I cried I was like I was like I think I cried so hard when they asked me to play her that like my tears like hit them in the face because it was one of those things 
it was cathartic because it was just something I knew I, I wanted, but I just was, I would never speak to. Um, and so they really were able to see see me as a whole sort of performer and, and champion that, even when I wasn't championing myself. So. so when you were doing those reads and reading Kelly, was this the Kelly that we see? Was that how you had interpreted her character? Close to. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was just because as a writer, we're always sort of like um, trying to crack the psychology of the characters that we play and or the characters that we write. And I think for me, as a writer, I'm a perf- a, perf- a performer's writer where I put myself in the role I oftentimes you know god bless the fact that my dog can't talk because I'll just be talking to myself and saying characters out loud and playing them and trying to respond organically and so um the way I performed her in the room was not dissimilar to what um I do on screen but um she has grown as far as like from page to stage as far as the journey that um I've been taken I've taken with her um because I do think like in the room, even though I'm reading her, I still have to wear two hats. And so, but when I'm performing, I like to wear just the one. Mm. Um, so when I actually start, started shooting her as a character, for me, it was being able to sort of take off the writer's hat and just really sort of double down on her psychology, the way she thinks about her friends, how she gives zero fucks <laughs> and um, really sort of embrace that. So do you, how does it work? Do you actually get to still write her parts, even though you're playing them or... I know you guys probably split up a lot of work, but yeah, give us some sense of how this works. Yeah, our writing process um, is pretty unique. It's really divide and conquer. So for every episode, every writer in the room sort of contributes. And so we break the story and the outline collectively as a group. uh, And then we sort of um, divide the writing of that episode amongst the people in the room. Um, And then sometimes that's happening you know, two times over because we'll have two episodes being broken and written at the same time. And it's just a very collaborative process. And so there's some times where um, an episode has Kelly in, but I'm not in that room working on that episode. I'm working on a different episode. Um, And it is collaborative. I mean, there's sometimes they'll be like, you know, hey, Tosh, come over here. And I'll come in. They're like, say this line. (laughs) And I'll say it as Kelly. They're like, cool. Now say this one. And then I was like, great. And then I'll leave and I'll realize, oh, they're debating like which way to go as far as just like the joke of the moment. Um, And then other times I don't know what's happening to Kelly or to that scene until we do that internal table read I was talking about. And an example of that is when Kelly gets fingered in swingers. (laughs) Easily I did. I did the not. Best Kelly scene ever. <laughs> did not know that that is what was happening because you know I was working on a different episode, and so then we came together to read both episodes out loud. Everyone was just like, "You're gonna like what's gonna happen," and I'm like, "Ooh, I don't know what's gonna happen either." Um, and then I read it out loud, and I'm like, "Okay, who did this?" <laughs> you know, wanting to know which writer did it. Um, but yeah, it's all very collaborative. And then once it's in my hand as an actor, that's another sort of pass of the baton where I can improvise and play around with the with the lines and stuff. So who uh, who was responsible for Kelly being high on Molly at uh, at Coachella? Oh my god, <laughs> that that was so that episode was written by Regina Hicks, but that room was populated at different points by everyone. Her being high, I I wasn't in the room when that sort of storyline popped <laughs> off, but it was definitely so fun to play. Yeah, yeah, I had a. I had such a great time. (laughs) 